How's it going everyone? I hope you're having an awesome day. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Chain Baker and in today's video we'll look at the effects of egg in bread making. This has been one of your most common questions so let's go to the kitchen and have a closer look. Have you ever asked yourself why a bread recipe is calling for egg? Why even use it? And what effect does it have on the final product? Because most commonly, as far as baked goods are concerned, eggs are used for cakes. But more often than not, some of our favorite enriched breads contain egg. And as it turns out, eggs can benefit our dough in a number of ways. And today, we'll compare four breads side by side, and we'll find out what effect each of the parts of the egg has on our dough, be it whole egg, egg white, or egg yolks. Let's start with some numbers. Generally, a whole egg is around 75% water and 9% fat. The yolk alone is about 50% water and 30% fat. And egg whites are around 90% water and they have practically no fat. These numbers will come in handy when you're trying to calculate a recipe using baker's percentage. Knowing this will help you adjust the amount of water and fat that you add to your dough. And with the stats out of the way, let's do some practical examples. We'll make four breads and they will all contain the same amount of flour, yeast, salt and water. And the first one contains no egg. The second one will again have flour, yeast, salt, water and a whole egg. And because we are using egg, I've reduced the amount of water that I'm adding to the dough to compensate for the amount of water that's contained in the egg. On to dough number three. Once again, flour, yeast, salt, water, but this time only egg white. If you want the exact recipe for these breads, you can find them in the link below the video. But let's move on to the fourth dough. Last but not least, we're going to use egg yolk in this one. The yolk itself is small, but still contains 50% water. So of course we adjusted the amount of water we're going to use. So let's get to mixing. We are going to make all four breads at the same time, more or less at the same temperature. Of course this is not a comparison of which one is best. There is no right answer to that. Which is best is up to you. And it's up to the requirements of the dough that you're making. Some breads don't benefit from egg being added to them. But what are the benefits of using egg? Well firstly, they are one of the most nutritious foods you could eat. Packed with protein and vitamins, they may as well be classed as a superfood. But when it comes to bread making, it goes a lot further than just nutritional benefits. Eggs of course add a nice flavor to the bread, and they can greatly improve the texture and the crust. The fat in the yolk acts similarly to other fats that you would use in your bread making. It inhibits the gluten formation, weakening it. That makes the dough softer and looser, and that's what makes the crumb a lot more airy because it rises higher and puffs up more. Egg whites on the other hand act as a coagulant. They will help with developing an even crumb with a texture that is more springy. Eggs can also extend the shelf life of your bread by lowering the pH and adding acidity. And let's not forget about the crust. Using egg yolks or whole eggs will make the crust of the bread caramelize more and also become nice and crispy. That being said, bread with egg in it should be baked at a lower temperature. You don't want the crust going too dark too early. Of course not everyone can eat eggs. There are a couple of things you can replace them with. If you want the texture of your bread to be nice and airy and fluffy, you could use oil, butter or other fats instead of the egg yolk. Even using sugar will make the crumb more airy and light. But let's get back to our breads for a second here. The one I just finished mixing is the one without egg. And I've decided to mix the one with the egg white next. Because the ones that contain egg yolk are a lot stickier. Leaving them to hydrate for a little bit longer will make them easier to knead. Comparing the dough with no egg versus the one with egg white, they're quite similar. They almost feel exactly the same. The next dough I'm going to knead is the one that contains a whole egg. As I mentioned earlier, the fatty yolk inhibits gluten formation. That can make the dough more sticky and more difficult to knead, especially by hand. I kneaded this for around the same amount of time as the other two, which is about 3 minutes. And as you can see, it's a little bit sticky, but we'll move on to the next one. The last dough only has egg yolk, and kneading it feels about the same as the one that contains whole egg. It is also sticky, but manageable. We'll also give this one around 3 minutes, and you may think that 3 minutes is not very long for kneading a dough, but this is a very small piece of dough. Let's clean down before moving on. This dough is only made up of 130 grams of flour, and the smaller your dough is, the more of it you work every time you press it into the table. That's why it takes less time. Okay, so let's get to fermenting. Top left corner is the dough with no egg. Top right corner is the dough with whole egg. Bottom left corner is the one with egg white. And bottom right corner is the one with egg yolk. I tried to make them all with about more or less the same final temperature. They're within a half a degree of each other. The first dough being the coolest and the last dough being the warmest. Because I want them to rise more or less at the same time, 
the first though had to be made cooler because it gets the advantage of being mixed first. And the last one benefits from being slightly warmer because it needs to catch up with the first one. I don't know about you, but I normally use whole eggs when making bread that requires egg. Do you ever use just whites or just yolks? And why? Let me know down in the comments. I guess a good reason for using a whole egg would be so that you don't have to come up with something to use the other half for. But then again, you could use the white in the dough and the yolk for glazing. Or you could use the yolk in the dough and the white for glazing. Both with very different results. Right, so we proved these for around an hour. Now we're going to give them a fold. Folding will help with equalizing the temperature. It will also help with degassing and building some tension into the dough so it's not too loose. The dough with no egg and the one with egg white it does really benefit from the extra tension. But I just wanted to keep things equal between all of these. The one with whole egg and the one with egg yolk is still a little bit sticky. So sometimes you may need to use some flour when performing this step. But back to building tension. The reason why the dough with no egg and the one with egg white don't benefit from it is because this is a relatively low hydration dough, only at 60%. And whilst kneading, we already developed the gluten fully, so the dough is already tight enough. The ones with the yolk and whole egg were looser. The gluten is weaker, so the dough is more runny in a sense. So folding the dough with no egg and with egg white will make it expand less, because it's tighter. Folding the dough with egg yolk and with whole egg may make it expand less, but it will still puff up nicely, because it's looser regardless. By folding them, we are ensuring that the dough expands more vertically instead of spreading out sideways. But if you want to learn more about folding, I have a full video on that in the Steps of Baking playlist on my channel. You can also find videos by using fat and adding fat to your bread dough in the Principles of Baking playlist. In fact, both of those playlists are full of useful information that you may find interesting. Right, so what happened here is I pre-shaped the dough and I let it rest for around 20 minutes. And now we're going to do the final shaping. This is where you will really feel the difference between the four doughs. The one with no egg feels nice and firm. It's still full of air bubbles, but it's nice and tight. So I'm going to shape them all the same way. Flatten them out, fold the top two corners in the middle, and then roll up. That's how you shape a regular batard. We'll be sure to pinch all the seams together and try to have them more or less the same shape. And they will all go in the same size baking tins, lined with some nonstick paper. The two doughs with no egg and with egg white don't really need any flour when shaping. But the two with whole egg and egg yolk are a little bit sticky, so a light dusting helps along the way. And this is actually the second time I'm doing this experiment, and both times the results were exactly the same. Now all the loaves have been shaped, we can proceed to the final proof. I'll give them a light dusting of flour to prevent the cling film from sticking. So far the bulk fermentation took around 2 hours, then we pre-shaped them, rested them for 20 minutes, and the final proof will take another 2 hours or so. Towards the end of proofing, I'll preheat my oven, 180 degrees celsius, fan off. We'll bake all the loaves at the same temperature, just to see the difference. The ones with the whole egg and the egg yolk have risen more rapidly, so they'll go in the oven first. We'll leave the other two to ferment for around 20 more minutes. At this point, I wasn't really sure what the difference would be between all the loaves. But as we'll see in a minute, the difference is quite significant. And these two are ready to join the other two in the oven right now. And there they are, fully baked. No egg, whole egg, egg white, egg yolk. And they look very different from each other. The crust is clearly different on all of them. And they're all different sizes. Well, let's have a closer look. First, the one that doesn't contain any egg. Looks like a regular loaf of bread. It hasn't puffed up too much, but it has a nice uniform shape. And the crust feels nice and soft. Next, we got the one with whole egg. Clearly, it has puffed up a little bit more. The crust is darker and crispier. And you can see the cracks all over it. This could be a desired result. Number three is the one with egg white. It looks very similar to one without egg, but the crust looks more evenly colored. But they're about the same volume. But the last one, now oh, that's a big boy, the one with egg yolk. This is puffed up massively. And it's got by far the darkest and crunchiest crust. And this is a big discovery for myself because I've tried making a bread with a crust like this in the past and I never knew how. I guess egg yolks is the answer. But looking at them from the outside is one thing. Let's cut them open and see what's in the middle. Of course we can kind of guess what the texture would be like just by looking at them. The bigger ones, of course, will be the softer ones. But let's do the all important taste test. Starting from the left, the one with no egg. It has a nice even crumb with little bubbles. 
It's nice and soft. It's just a regular old white bread. It's just a benchmark for this test basically. Next up, let's pick up the one with whole egg. You can clearly see that the crumb is made up of larger bubbles. They've spread out more. Pressing it feels nice and soft. Quite a bit softer than the bread with no egg. This though would make a nice roll. I like the crispy crust. Biting through this is effortless. The third one was the most surprising one to me. The one made with egg white is very similar to the one with no egg. With one difference, the crumb is a little bit tighter. This is due to the coagulating effect of the egg white. That is by no means a bad thing. If you want a heartier bread that's easier to slice, you may want to use egg white. Last but not least, the one with egg yolk. It is super airy and fluffy. This is the lightest one of all. It would make the best burger buns. When it comes to flavor, the one with egg white tastes almost the same as the one without egg. The one with egg yolk is the eggiest one, which of course is not a bad thing. But the one with whole egg, that one is slightly less eggy. And that concludes our test. I hope you found this interesting. So if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know down in the comments. To see more videos like this, click over here. To subscribe to the channel, click right here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.